Hello, we are back to the wonderful world of coding, and today we are going to be diving into mixed effect models, and more specifically into random effects. What is a random effect? A random effect is going to be a component that you're adding to your model that is kind of another way of explaining more variation within your data. And the way I like to think about it is that within a fixed effect, every single level is very important and they're not interchangeable, right? So like males versus females, if your fixed effect is sex versus maybe ID. Like let's say you had a bunch of, uh, a bunch of males and this was Bob and John and somebody else, right? It doesn't really matter who Bob and John and somebody else are. So the levels of random effects can be easily interchanged. It's called like exchangeable information. Now, what makes a good random effect? A random effect needs to have at least, I'd say, three or four levels, at least three, hopefully more, levels. And it needs to have at least five observations-ish to be statistically stable, if you're really going for that, in each level. So what I mean is your random effect, let's say we went with the ID example, you need to have at least three or four different IDs and several samplings of each ID. So one individual was sampled four times and that individual is your random effect. All right, the data set that we're going to be working with today is the Palmer Penguin data set. Um, I will link it below. It's super cute. Um, it's really well done. It's maintained by the amazing artist and coder, Alison Horst. What we have are three species of penguins, and these penguins are distributed across different islands, and they've measured various body metrics of these penguins, like bill and all this stuff, okay? So that's the background of what we're going to be using before we jump into our models. Let's go do that. All right, let's get right into it. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is, of course, looking at our beloved packages. You're going to notice I'm using GLM TMB. That is my template model builder. That's the package I like to use for mixed models. It goes hand in hand with Dharma, and I've had a lot of luck with it. It's got a lot of great vignettes and troubleshooting stuff. I'll link those down below. Um, and so that's the one I like to go with. So now let's talk about data. So like I said, we're going to be working with our Palmer Penguin data set. We're going to jump um, right into quickly looking at what they look like. I've already built the, the plot for kind of our biological question here because that is not the point of what we are doing today. Big question for us in this video is how is body mass predicted by sex? Okay. And so we're looking at males and females of these different penguins and they occur on different islands. So that's kind of the jumping on point for how we're building this model um, and how we're going to be looking at variation. Let's jump into building our first model and thinking about random effects. So the first thing we're going to be doing is building our model. Uh, we'll just call it model one. I'm using GLMM TMB, again, that package. So again, it's called body mass. It's predicted by sex. And so if I introduce here island as a random effect, You'll notice this is a random intercept model. Uh, you can also have random slope models. If we're interested in that, that can be a future video, but this is the simplest example, so we're gonna run with that. We're just thinking, okay, there might be variation of uh, body mass across islands. Maybe there's different like nutrients available on these different islands. So maybe island, though it's not the driving quality of like body mass, maybe, maybe it could be on explaining some underlying variation. Okay, so we've got our model one. Let's look, let's do our summary mod one what do we see well we see that males are significantly heavier than females that's not really surprising let's go into the part that most people just scroll right past which is the random effects right so first you're going to see the island this is the mean variance of all of, of, of between all of the islands and what you'll notice here oh, this really got me for a while Variance versus standard deviation. Guess what? What is the difference between these two columns? Literally, standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. This is only to put it on the same scale as the rest of your estimates. That is the point of it, okay? That's that. So what are we seeing? We're seeing that there's three groups. There's three islands. That checks out. What you're seeing, um, why are there two, <laughs> why are there two lines here, right? You've just specified one random variable. What's this residual stuff? So the island random effect is talking about the mean variance. So how much spread of your data is going on between the islands? So how different is Bisco from Dream and how different is Dream from Tortison? Okay. 
Residual is how different is this within itself? How different is Bisco as an island overall within itself? And so I want to make it clear that the random effects that you're defining are going to change based on how much variation your fixed effects are explaining. So right now, all we have explaining body mass is sex and our fixed effects. And what we're seeing in the islands here is that islands is not doing a great job of capturing the rest. We can go into something called COEF, which are the coefficients. We can go to the coefficients of model one to look. We can look within the random effect, right? Because this random effect that we've specified is random intercept. And so I'm gonna hopefully put up a graph now, but as you guys probably know, when we're making a model, there is a intercept, which is where are you kind of tracking on the y-axis, and there's a slope, which is what direction are you going and how high or low. So when we specify random intercept, what we're saying is like, okay, think about different points. We can specify, we're giving you the flexibility to specify a different point. The slope is the same for all of them because this is not a random slope model, it is a random intercept model. The random intercept model really does generate random intercepts for all three values, all three levels of your factor. The other thing to think about is what is your intercept? This gets into a bit of a statistics and I know this is a random effect video, but it's important to think about this, especially when we're looking at factor level comparisons. What is our intercept here? It's sex female, okay? So here it's saying, look, this is what our intercept is given our parameter of zero, which is in this case, female. If you add 674 to this, you will get the estimate for male on this island. And so it's really important when you start looking at significance and you're comparing levels, understanding what your intercept is. So as we move forward, we're going to be looking at that and really checking in to make sure that you are understanding your data and understanding what the model's actually saying. What about the average body size of sex across species? You'll notice that the plot has changed. Now, instead of island, I just want to highlight species instead. We are running model two. And so, of course, males are still heavier than females. That really hasn't changed. That, that effect is quite strong. But let's move up to the random effects. The first thing you're going to see is this super huge flip-flop, right? And how much variance uh, the spread of the data are explained by our defined intercept. So how different these species are between each other versus how they're different within each other, that residual, right? If we look at how much variance is being explained by our um, species variable versus the residual variance. The total variance explained by species here, if we just take a quick, again, this is just a quick dirty look at how this works, but it's around 80%, right? Like, that's huge. Hmm. So as a biologist and as a statistical person, you're probably starting to think, okay, this variable is explaining so much variation within our data maybe it should be a fixed effect. <laughs> now let's open it up like we did with the previous one, three species, that checks out. Let's go to that, right? Where is that slope coming from? Well, right here, from your fixed effect. That slope comes from your fixed effects from your sex male. Let's go back here again. Here you're gonna see the numbers have changed a bit, thinking about, uh, about the species in general. So for females, remember that is our intercept here, uh, females of Adélie, uh, are this much and then add this much if you are a male. Okay, let's do one last example using this data set, which is a nested random effect. Okay. Species within an island. So we know that species seem to explain a lot more variation than islands do. We should probably move that to a fixed effect, but if we're being stubborn about it, how do species on an island, how does that capture variation? So we've got species, so you know, here for example on Bisco, we have the Gen 2 and we have the Adelie. Here we have the chin strap and the Adelie, right? So does this, uh, do the species within an island, maybe does that explain this underlying um, variation? So how we define that here, this is called a nested random effect, is that we have species and those exist within an island. We've got five groups. Let me show you why. Again, remember it's species within the islands. So Adelie and Bisco, Adelie and Dream, Adelie and Tord. Orgerson. So you've got the species 
within the island. Okay, what intercept would you give that? What are the females weighing? How much more are the males weighing? Um, and you'll notice between the three, these adeli are not changing very much. And that explains a lot, right? When we think back to the island, across islands, was there a lot of variation there? Well, no. Um, and so it's we're seeing that again and again happening throughout these data. Okay, so one thing that we have to think about when we're looking at uh, these random effects models, is we want the variation to be as small as possible within our random effects because we want them to be explained by the fixed effects in our models, by the driving variables. This stuff is the underlying population level stuff that's kind of happening in the background that maybe our experiment didn't necessarily take, a care, take care of. So we would like these numbers in general to be as small as possible. So for our last model, uh, what I would like to do is do what I would do for a biologically realistic one. So I'm just going to bring it up here. We've got the body mass predicted, of course, by sex. And of course, I'm going to move species over because we know that species is going to have probably a pretty important role on predicting body mass. In my random effects, I would put island as a random effect. Well, let's look at the summary of it. So again, uh, we're seeing that the males are heavier than the females. That's not surprising. You also see that the Gen 2 are heavier, but heavier than what? Again, we have to go back to our intercept. What is our intercept? We know it's female. What is it? What else is it? It's also Adelie. So it's female Adelie penguins. Okay, And that is something that can be very easily confused when you're leveling your models and looking at them. Um, if we look again at our random effects now, look at how this standard deviation, how the variation between islands has plummeted because a lot of that variation is now being explained by our fixed effects. Random effects are really great, uh, explain underlying variation that you might be seeing in your numbers. They help bolster what the fixed effects are trying to capture. It's really fun and important to mess around with it and actually try. Um, you can then do an analysis of variance and an ANOVA, comparing your models and seeing which um, variance structure best explains your models. That's totally fine to do. Anyway, so much to say. Statistics can be really hard, but I hope that this kind of helped um, clarify what random effects do, how you can use them for your benefit. And with that, hope you guys have a great week and happy coding.